And our speaker this morning is a clear channel of love. So you know, you know you'll never be the same after this encouragement this morning. I give to you practitioner, Carol Campbell. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And a very special and warm welcome to everyone here to the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. For those of you who are watching us online, wish you were here. <laughs> Today is my birthday. <laughs> and my God, I can't believe how old I am. <laughs> When did that happen? I certainly don't feel any different than I did inside when I was 25 or 30. To be honest, I'm not handling this age business very well because I can't relate to it. What exactly is old age? <laughs> At what point are you supposed to be old? You know, I'll tell you a little story. When I first started coming here, the Temple of Light. A concerned congregant said to me, you need to dress your age. <laughs> well, after laughing myself silly, I asked, well, what's that supposed to mean? And who is supposed to decide how I should dress? You know, would that be you? <laughs> so now bear in mind, this was some 25 years ago when I was still a hot girl. <laughs> strange old lady has moved into my house. I have no idea who she is, where she came from, or how she got in. I certainly did not invite her. All I know is one day she wasn't there, and the next day she was. Spot on. <laughs> She's a clever little old lady too. She manages to keep out of sight for the most part, but whenever I want to check my appearance in the mirror, there she is, hogging the whole show, obliterating my gorgeous face and body. This is so rude. I've tried screaming at her, but she just screams back. And lately, food seems to be disappearing at an alarming rate, especially the good stuff, ice cream and cake. <laughs> she must have a real sweet tooth, but she better watch it. Because when I catch a glimpse of her in the mirror, she's really packing on those pounds. <laughs> on top of that, she sneaks into my closet when I'm not home and alters my clothes so they don't fit. Plus, she's been managing to tamper with my books and magazines on blurring the print so I can't read it. <laughs> Heaven only knows how she has managed to adjust the volume controls on the TV and my phone. All I hear now are mumbles and whispers. It's most annoying. Trust me, I hope she never finds out where you live. <laughs> <laughs> now, growing older is not an excuse for not living fully and experiencing the best of the rest of your life until your very last breath. But that requires continually expanding your view of life, being open to learning new ways of being and doing and loving and most of all, thinking. Do you know scientists have discovered that we think around 60,000 thoughts per day and the majority of those thoughts are just repeat offenders, rehearsing and rehashing old patterns, replaying negative dramas, retelling old stories which may or may not even be true, dredging up old hurts, and so on. If new thoughts are not added into the mix, then this old thinking can create ruts, you know, like the grooves on a vinyl record on repeat. <laughs> Today's thoughts create tomorrow's experiences. The older we get, 
the more important it is to continuously re-evaluate the messages we were bombarded with growing up and those that are constantly fed to us now through negative conversations and disempowering advertisements. It would seem that women, and particularly women of my generation and older, have been targeted and programmed to believe that we're not good enough unless we have this makeup. We're not lovable enough unless we have this type of partner. We're not strong enough. We're not smart enough. Our role is to take care of everybody except ourselves. And if we dare to voice our displeasure at this expectation, you're deemed selfish or just unladylike. Well, <laughs> and when you pass a certain age, well, just bring out the rocking chair and keep yourself quiet. <laughs> Thank God those attitudes are changing. I have no intention of growing old gracefully. <laughs> Tom Johnson writing in his book, You Are Always Your Own Experience, from which Michaela read this morning, says this on page 122, and I quote, every time that you criticize or demean other someone, someone else or your own self, you are demeaning the presence of God, which is the reality of your big S self, as well as that of everyone else, end quote. Now this is what is meant by bearing false witness. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this teaching we know as the science of mind, said, people don't stop living because they get old. They get old because they stop living. So ask yourself, what am I believing about age and aging? Is there such a thing as old age? If you keep a journal, which I suggest you do, journal on this, and it doesn't matter your age, Try to identify any negative beliefs that you've been holding and decide if you want to continue hugging them up. Have they been serving you well? Some of these could include messages like 60s over the hill. Incidentally, 70 is the new middle age. <laughs> You're too old to start anything new. When you get to a certain age, you get put out to pasture. Which man or, or woman is going to want me at this age? Life is no fun past 50. First you work, and then you die. <laughs> Ernest Holmes also said, and I'm paraphrasing here, one way of recognizing if your thought patterns are working for you is to check the direction of your life. Is it moving forward? It's going in the right direction then. So if you're feeling stuck and stagnant, maybe some radical clearing is required. You know, mental spring cleaning. How do you do that? By spending some quiet, reflective time with yourself and taking an honest, unapologetic inventory of your life. Notice how you feel doing this review. Do you like what you see? Our history may include some uncomfortable moments of shame, blame, regret, anger. That's okay. Feel them. This exercise is not about guilting yourself into depression, but simply to identify where some changes could be made in the present moment. Then allow yourself to be lovingly guided about making those changes and get the help you need. Change the negative belief into a positive statement. This is transformational. Change your thinking, change your life are not just words. It's foundational to the philosophy of the science of mind. And a little plug reminding you about Reverend Michael's class, taught of the same name on Tuesday evenings online, right here. Now here's an example of reframing a negative message into something positive. Suppose you have been told repeatedly through someone's actions or words, you're not good enough. You could instead tell yourself, 
I am discovering how wonderful I am. And I love myself just the way I am. You could say that right now. I am discovering how wonderful I am. And I love myself just the way I am. Or if some well-meaning partner or friend says, honey, you could lose a little weight here and there. <laughs> Instead of running to the gym to kill yourself exercising because now you feel like crap, <laughs> tell yourself, I am at peace with my body. I love myself just the way I am. Say it. I am, I am at, at peace, peace with, with my, my body, body, and I love myself just the way I am. <laughs> now, that's not to say you don't begin taking better care of yourself and your body, if that's indicated. But make it be on your terms, and lovingly so. Learn to value yourself at least as much as you have valued others, and practice self-care. Without self-worth, you are much more likely to accept the unacceptable. Here are some affirmative statements from author and life coach, Dr. Christian Northrup. I'll say them once, then you can repeat it with me. I am beginning to make positive changes in my life starting right now. I am beginning to make positive changes in my life starting right now. It is safe for me to feel positive and fulfilled. It is safe for me to feel positive and fulfilled. Day by day, I improve the quality of myself. Day by day, I improve the quality of myself. I am willing to change and grow. I am willing to change and grow. Now while I advocate for using affirmations to effect change, understand that the occasional affirmation isn't going to change your life any more than the occasional push-up is going to give you well-toned six-pack abs. Right, honey? <laughs> When we're advised to pray without ceasing, that doesn't mean to the exclusion of living your life, but rather to let your life be your prayer. To be so in tune with spirit that your life is spirit in expression intentionally, and not just when you mouth platitudes or cry out in despair with some affirmations when makajuku. Always. And in all ways, we must live as spirit, by allowing spirit to live as us. It doesn't matter the age, station, sex, sexual orientation, status, ethnicity. God is one, expressing as the many. I like to say there's only one of us here, and that is God. If and when ideas of separation surface, we need to do what is required to reconnect, to remember, as in reintegrate yourself with spirit. Truth is, there can never be any separation from the essence of your being. Can you separate the taste of a sweet Julie mango from the mango itself? No. <laughs> Neither can we be separated from God. It is who we are. Any perceived separation is an illusion created in our own mind. Illusion is not truth. Even though the perception may appear factual in the moment, facts are temporary and transitory, dependent on available information and therefore changeable. Now, when we're old enough, like me, <laughs> when we're old enough to think for ourselves, we begin to make choices. And that starts pretty early. Old enough to think for yourself can be two. Start making choices. And we can choose, the older we get, to let go of the facts of our history and begin to embrace the possibilities 
of our eternal now. Living in the eternal now paradoxically means we must live with grace and surrender. Trust the process and take our hands off the steering wheel. Any negativity that's hanging around from past experiences are really doorways to our conscious awareness of our oneness, an opportunity to learn and grow. So don't stuff them down or bottle them up. Experience them. At every age and stage, we think we know it all, don't we? <laughs> but seriously, if we get to 80 and we're still acting like a teenager, maybe we missed out on the wisdom class. <laughs> on the other hand, if we get to 80 and we still haven't learned how to enjoy life, maybe we missed out on the happiness and fulfillment class. It's all about balance. Happiness, joy, fulfillment, intelligence are available at any age. But how you demonstrate that at 16 may not be how you choose to demonstrate it at 60. And that's OK. Answer me this. Why on earth would we choose to invent reasons not to enjoy life? Hmm? <laughs> Perhaps we find it difficult to accept that good is available to us every day, at any age. Add to that the fear of getting older, and you may not be so ready to entertain the possibility of endless joy if there's a final frontier of death looming large. But is there some rule that says we shouldn't sing and dance and laugh our way into our next adventure? What more can life demand of us but that we do the best we can and try to improve every day? We like to declare that everything is perfect. And in a way, that's true. But consider this. Perfection is a moving target. <laughs> we don't have to strive to be perfect. So stressing yourself to achieve or demonstrate perfection is an unnecessary pursuit. We are already perfect right where we are, just as we are. We only need to live our best life. Now Deepak Chopra, writing in his book, Endless Body, Timeless Mind, says, and I quote, if we could effectively trigger the intention not to age, the body would carry it out automatically. Intention is the active partner of attention. By reviewing their intention to live active, purposeful lives, many elderly people can dramatically improve their motor abilities, strengths, agility, and mental responses. The decline of vigor in old age is largely the result of people expecting to decline. You can prevent such loss by consciously programming your mind to remain youthful, using the power of your intention. I know that sounds a little far-fetched, but it is true. You use it in other areas of your life, so why not here? Any deterioration in age would be unavoidable if the body was simply material. But there is an invisible part of us that is immune to the ravages of time." End quote. There is a mind-body connection. We're not just a sack of flesh and bones. Now that can be a scary proposition to consider if you don't feel beautiful, adequate, capable of being the best version of you, and willing to take responsibility for the trajectory of your life. If you're convinced that this is all there is, contemplating an exit strategy for the next phase of your life, your legacy, and all that entails can be quite unnerving, right? Here's an affirmation for you. Everything necessary for the full and complete expression of the most boundless experience of joy is mine now. You want to say that? Yeah. Everything necessary for the full and complete expression of the most boundless experience of joy is mine 
now. Know that the source of this joy is inexhaustible. Therefore, the expression and experience of joy is inevitable once we choose joy. Growing older does not equate with growing old and declining into oblivion. Look around you here in the sanctuary. We have plenty of what would be considered old people in here, but we're not owl. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. If you don't grow older, you die young. <laughs> Growing older doesn't look so bad now, does it? <laughs> be brave, be courageous and steadfast. Sing and dance to your heart's content and prove the naysayers wrong. A quotation here from Henry Miller says, the aim of life is to live. And to live means to be aware joyously, drunkenly, serenely, divinely aware. How does that feel? I'd like to close with a beautiful affirmative prayer by Ernest Holmes, found in the Science of Mind text on page 292. So I invite you to just get comfortable, take a deep breath, and close your eyes. Now just listen to my voice. I stand in the midst of eternal opportunity, which is forever presenting me with the evidence of its full expression. I am joy. Peace and happiness. I am the spirit of joy within me. I am the spirit of peace within me, of poise and power. I am the spirit of happiness within me. I radiate life. I am life. There is one life, and that life is my life now. I am the presence of God individualized. And so it is. Namaste. I just love that meditation, especially with the hummingbird singing harmony in the background. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you, Carol. That was a master class in being you and living your best life. Yeah. She reminded us to embrace our possibilities in the eternal now. She reminded us that people get old not because of living, but we get old when we stop living. And she also reminded us that we should learn to value and care for ourselves by remembering that today's thoughts create tomorrow's experiences. Thank you again, Karen.